This is just a sample of the audiobook. To get the complete audiobook access the link posted in the first comment. In late October of 1954, Horace Stoneham, longtime owner of the New York Giants, was on top of the baseball world. And more important to Stoneham at least, his team was finally the toast of the town, eclipsing both the Brooklyn Dodgers and the New York Yankees. The Giants had just swept the mighty Cleveland Indians to win the World Series. The Indians, winners of 111 games that year, were heavy favorites, bolstered by a formidable pitching staff with 20-game winners Early Wynn and Bob Lemon, and a great offense anchored by American League batting champion Bobby Avila and power hitters Larry Doby and Al Rosen. But the Giants felt the magic and shocked the baseball world. The series turned on Willie Mays' famous over-the-shoulder catch in Game 1, and the Giants never looked back. Defense, speed, timely hitting, and an uncanny knack for substitution in manager Leo DeRocher's use of pinch hitter Dusty Rhodes were all too much for Cleveland. The future seemed bright indeed, and thoughts of returning the Giants to their pre-World War II eminence in the National League danced in Stoneham's head. He had a young superstar in Mays, a solid if not outstanding pitching staff, a brilliant and feisty manager in DeRocher, and, more critical for Stoneham, an enthusiastic fan base. The Giants drew 1,155,067 for home games during the 1954 season, more than they had in five years. With such a result and so much promise, Stoneham was poised for a great run. Happy days seemed here again. The baseball gods are fickle and cruel, however. The Giants' perch atop the heights of New York's sporting world would be momentary, and their reign as world champions brief, lasting only one season. They would not enjoy such glory for another fifty-six years, and in a likeness and at a location that could not have been even remotely imagined by mid-1950s New Yorkers.